Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. It is Wednesday. Yesterday I started the broadcast, said it was Monday. All days are messed up, but either way, hope everybody is doing well. Again, if you are brand new to the channel, like, subscribe, click a like, all that crap that goes along. Uh, show support for the channel. Again, we continue to give you uh, daily updates of unbiased information. So let's talk about a lot of stuff going on. Uh, today we had Fed Minutes. Uh, as you can imagine, Fed Minutes pretty much came up, you know, like a dud. Okay. I mean, I, as far as I understand, the economy uh, has not changed in the last 32 minutes since the previous uh, Fed Minutes came out. And from the CPI number and the PPI number and every other uh, every other indicator in between, the world is kind of the same, right? Uh, as we always say, uh, these guys just seem to get paid by the word uh, and not by uh, the value or the validity of what they're saying. But this time around, they came out. Same thing, Fed affirms, uh, basically, you know, the fight continues against inflation, nothing new, and there was a pretty much muted event. Um, nice spike into the event, there was a little bit of sell-off, then a little bit of spike, then a little bit of sell-off. Ultimately, Dow finished down uh, 84 points, S&P notched its fourth straight day of uh, losses, and the NASDAQ eked out a little bit of victory. And considering how uh, the market played out uh, from yesterday's session, 2.5%, uh, move on the downside for the for the Nasdaq and another seven percent and seven hundred point loss for the Dow. You know the bulls can't really feel that great about today's session. And if you look at how the day played out, um, you saw a number of things continue to be uh, concerning. Number one, uh, we put in our fourth straight day, actually fifth straight day, one, two, three, four, fifth straight day of lower highs, lower lows. Uh, the bulls failed to rally on anticipation of potential news. They failed to take out the previous day's high. Again, that's not a really a good thing. Uh, the leaders continue to drift, right? You have Microsoft uh, continues to drift, right? You got a name like Netflix. Again, this is all the high beta names. Uh, they continue to drift. A name, for example, like Meta that had great earnings, right? Great earnings. The earnings feel like a long, long time ago, uh, and it continues to drip. Uh, you look like Apple, for example, Again, continues to drip, you know, bounce off the 150-day moving average, but nothing really great. Uh, Tesla today, we talked about it last night on the video. Beautiful, beautiful move today. Uh, wash out into the rising 20-day support. Uh, you know, that was fine. But again, it doesn't really, it's not really here or there. It still needs a couple of days to get, get, kind of get out of this channel. But the most important part is how the market continues to uh, digest information. You got a slew of earnings that came out. Uh, and Nvidia finally reported it was supposed to come out. Uh, a few minutes after four, they decided to to uh, to come out about about an hour later. But hey, Nvidia, great great move on earnings. Uh, the earnings were they great? I don't think they were great. They they beat them. You know, they beat by eight cents. Uh, the key word to this earnings uh, report was AI. Right, AI is the hot thing right now, uh, and AI is the reason why uh, Nvidia is surging. And not only is it surging uh, for tomorrow, we have to be watching all this channel up here. Uh, to see if it could take out recent highs. Uh, Etsy, another uh, another retailer, online retailer, uh, you know, blown up, right? Had a really, really good quarter. Uh, not so much for Lucid, right? Lucid down about 8% uh, after the close. Uh, they fell short of uh, production estimates. I think they only produced uh, 7,000 cars or so. Nice looking car, man. I, I will say this. Nice looking car. Uh, they did have a showroom. Um, I live in New Jersey. Uh, by the for all you guys who know, the Short Hills Mall. They used to have a Lucid display, and despite that, uh, I've only seen literally one Lucid on the road uh, in the last couple of years. And again, apparently their production numbers are validating what I what I just said. Uh, but more important is we we, we want to see what happens tomorrow uh, with this Nvidia earnings. Usually, uh, you would turn around and be, like everything would just be exploding after hours. Uh, you know, look, I mean, look, you got Tesla up about a buck, right? The Qs are up, uh, you know, the Qs are up, what, about a buck or so, right? About a buck, even less than a buck. Considering that NVIDIA is um, a NASDAQ 100 heavyweight, and not only does it represent, uh, you know, itself, it represents 
Uh, you could arguably be, you know, arguably talk about the most important group in the NASDAQ 100, which is the semiconductor. So let's see how the overall market reacts. I'd like to see how uh, NVIDIA handles the first dip. And because, again, not just because the stock comes out with good earnings doesn't mean that first dip is going to get bought. Just ask the good folks today of Baidu, right? This thing gapped up today. If <laughs> This thing gapped up today about 10, 12 points and then just, just absolutely got them destroyed. So it's going to be very, very important to see uh, how NVIDIA handles that first pullback. Can it get above the recent highs? And can they start building above your recent highs? Uh, Alibaba, I believe... Uh, reports tomorrow as well. I used to trade this stock all the time. As you can see with these these god awful, these little god awful channels, this stock, at least for me, completely untradeable. I haven't traded Alibaba probably in about two years. Um, I used to trade it all the time. And once it started putting all these little gaps with the, the average true range shrinking after the gap ups, I've completely lost interest in this thing. But again, it's going to uh, represent another, uh, you know, another. Uh, cog in the in the retail slash wholesale uh online arena so we'll see uh how the market handles that uh from the from the point of reference from uh the etf side you got the spiders right you know holding on to the 50-day moving average uh that's where they bounce right this 397 is going to be super duper important uh going forward because again anything remember guys and especially if you are if you are brand new when the market is above the 50-day, generalizing, it's going to bring in bullish action. When the market is below the 50-day moving average, it's going to pull some things here. And you could, you could clearly tell by the point of reference. Here we are. Here's where when when uh, the spies lost the 50-day moving average, went on a four-month binder, right, straight, you know, right the hell and back. Uh, when the market finally reclaimed the 50-day moving average, started moving higher. And here we are, right? Here we are. We defended the 50-day moving average today on the spies. That's the 50-day. For the bulls to get, uh, for the bulls to start to get traction, uh, they're gonna need they're gonna need a build above 401. And for the bears, any close, and again, set these alerts, guys. Any close below 397, and this whole narrative in the market might change uh, very, very quickly because that's the you know that's the importance of the 50-day moving average. If the spy in the near future uh, does indeed get below that 397 on the close. Uh, there's going to be a very, very uh, different conversation we're going to be having on, on the next video. You got QQQs, again, which I pretty much uh, follow uh, on a daily basis. Uh, again, nice move down. Again, we had five days in a row, like I said a few minutes ago, uh, lower highs, lower lows. Uh, we are building now day two uh, below the 20-day moving average, which, again, it's not that big of a deal. Again, we, we're, we're going to start calling it a big deal, like I talked about in last night's video, when we get to the 50-day moving average, but it doesn't make it doesn't mean that we can't continue to, to take advantage to the downside. So here's the big levels that I'm watching for the next couple of days. For the bulls to get back into the saddle, kind of resume the massive, massive rally we've had since January the 6th, the Q is going to need to reclaim, you know, roughly 299 on the close. Everybody see that? That's that would be reclaiming the 20-day moving average. Uh, if the bears want to continue this, uh, you know, this swan dive or this miniature swan dive, uh, they're going to need to confirm down this 292.50. So they start confirming this 292.50s, then you know we start looking at 287s, 288 levels, and then ultimately uh, we will get a step closer to the 50-day moving average. And then the question will be: If the spies get below the 50-day, well, are the Qs going to going to pull up back the spies above it? or the spy is going to pull down the cues. Usually in, in, in my general experiences, whatever indexes gets below the 51st and can't rally, they're going to pull everything else down. So again, that 397 level is going to be uh, super in, uh, super important uh, in the near future uh, for the SPYs. And obviously we're still, you know, still about 10 points away uh, from the QQQs. Uh, going into tomorrow's session, you know, I'm kind of Delta. I'm kind of Delta neutral. Uh, you know, I like some things. I don't love some things. Uh, I definitely like. Um, I definitely like some names. Uh, I definitely like some names to the short side. Um, I like some names uh, to the downside. Let me give you guys a couple of names. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of names that I'm watching for tomorrow. And then I have to take. Uh, I have to go take my daughter to basketball practice. So. Um, yeah, well, let's talk about some names here. Let's look at Home Depot. Uh, Home Depot had. Uh, a crappy, uh, a crappy quarter, as you can see, uh, gap down a couple of days ago, put in an inside day, didn't take out the highs, didn't take out the lows on half the volume. 
it might not trigger tomorrow, but you know, keep an eye on the earnings low. This thing starts, you know, this thing maybe maybe if, if in, the, in the perfect scenario maybe goes, you know, sideways for another day or so. But if Home Depot, uh, if Home Depot starts losing the earnings lows, I think the next leg is going to be lower. Obviously, uh, OTTR. I'm not really familiar with the name. And again, this is kind of when you know when I'm putting. You know, usually I'm talking about Nvidia, Tesla. You know, well, I'm still talking about Nvidia, but you kind of get my point. You know, I, you know, when I'm talking about beta, it's it's a premium session. We get a really clean uh, kind of move to um, you know move move to a perspective where I think the market's going to go. When I'm talking about Home Depot, right? When I'm talking about OTTR, again, these are nice looking valid charts on both sides of the market, but in the market is not screaming premium, right? Not yet, right? Not yet. Again, the bulls need to reclaim 299 in the queues for us to open up the floodgates. Well, maybe that's a bad example, Poise choice of words. Maybe open up some of parting the Red Sea, maybe start the bulls, start the next leg up. But look at this OTTR, it looks great, right? You have a, uh, you have a two day, three day consolidation uh, after earnings. If it starts taking out the earnings highs, uh, can move higher. Uh, Airbnb, right, had a great quarter, had a really nice quarter. Uh, since then, straight down four days in a row. They defended the 10-day moving average. I, I definitely want to watch if they start taking out the 60-minute channel, right? If they start getting above the 60-minute channel, maybe the stock finally wakes up. Same thing with kind of like Roku as well. Kind of same play, right? Roku had a really nice quarter, had a really good two-day run. They came in uh, just like Airbnb that tested the 10-day moving average. Roku held on to the five-day moving average. So look at the 60-minute view on Roku, right? It's getting pretty tight here. If this thing could start reclaiming back the channel from two days ago, maybe this thing finally wakes up, especially if NVIDIA uh, can spark a, 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 a spark, a general rally, especially in all technology. It's something uh, definitely to keep an eye on. And one name I kind of like for all you guys who, who trade these smaller cap names, uh, it's part of that AI group. Keep, keep an eye on this SOUN. Maybe it doesn't go in the next day or two, but keep an eye on this thing for your radar. If this thing, this is a nice long distribution, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're talking about almost two weeks worth of distribution. If it could get above this channel here, uh, maybe this thing can start waking up as well. So that's it, guys. Everything else I'm obviously watching. I always watch Tesla. I always watch everything else. Again, tomorrow, uh, I want to definitely see how NVIDIA handles its first dip, right? Obviously, right now, it's surging after hours. And if it handles that first dip and, and traps, we might get a, a pretty good value bet on the rising 60-minute support. If not, I will watch this thing opening, uh, opening range for potential strength play. All right, guys, everybody have a great remainder of your day. Tomorrow is Thursday. Just remember, tomorrow is no video. Tomorrow is my regular uh, evening off for all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar. All the stuff I talk about here, we talk about the whole day. It's a lot of nonstop. Six hours of me talking, blah, 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 blah. And eventually, we do get into some stock talk as well. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all soon. Take care.